Greetings uh, in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. On behalf of the whole congregation, I'd like to say congratulations to you. And uh, I know that Paul Lee and other members of Ang family did their best the last one year. So you made it. Uh, it's a one-year anniversary. Congratulations. Uh, before I start my sermon, let me pray. Let us pray together. Dear Father, we are gathered here to worship you. We believe that you received our praise and worship as an offering. Now I ask you to anoint us with your spirit and your word. Let us stand before you and listen to your voice. Lord, speak to us, and we, your servants, will listen. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, shall we read the Bible verse? That is Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Okay, if you don't have the Bible, I will read it for you. Uh, let me read just one verse. Uh, that is Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Yes. Disciples of Jesus made a great decision, that is to follow Jesus. As we all know, they left their boats and their, even their family. They really enjoyed being with his master, Jesus. They were so thrilled to see the miracles done by uh, his teacher. The leper being healed and the blind uh, receiving light. Surely they liked his teaching, great teachings that amazed a lot of people around them. That day they were listening to a great sermon on the mountain you may know the Sermon on the Mountain. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are you, when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil because of me, rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. You are the salt of the earth, you are the light of the world. They were listening to great sermon, a historic, memorable sermon. While they were listening to this great sermon, their minds of disciples, however, seemed to be preoccupied with other, other things. With these questions, what shall I eat? What shall I drink? What shall I wear? Knowing all these needs of his disciples, Jesus calmed them with his finger, and he gave them a higher calling and higher way of life. He told them not to worry about their needs in this world, but instead to seek God's kingdom first. And then he gave a promise that everything they need will be added to them in the future. Jesus told them, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. That is our scripture verse today. This passage is very simple, and the message is very plain. I'd like to share three main points out of this. There are three important facts to learn for the lives of followers of Jesus. If we want to follow Jesus, we need to think of three facts out of this verse. First, uh, there will be, first will be, there is a priority uh, to be observed. In our lives, there is a priority to be observed. Second, there is an effort to be paid. Third, there is a blessing to be enjoyed. Let us look at closer to this first. First one, there is a priority to be observed. There are so many things in our lives, the important choices we, may, we need to make. The career we choose, whom we choose to marry if one is single, and how much we spend our finance uh, in purchase of house or merchandise or automobiles. 
But no choice is so significant as to seek the kingdom of God if we are the follower of Jesus Christ. Then what is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God or the kingdom can be defined simply as God's blessed dominion or God's reign on our lives. Psalm 145.13 first says, Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures through all generations. If you closer look at this verse, the kingdom and his dominion are used as a parallel, used as the same meaning. So that means kingdom means dominion. The Greek word from kingdom is basileion. The noun form of it, uh, verb, verb form of it is basileo. Basileo means rule over. That means Basileian, the kingdom, means ruling over. So kingdom of God, that means God's blessed dominion or God's blessed ruling, God's sovereignty over us. Human tragedy originated from the refusal of God's dominion, God's blessed dominion. That is original sin. We call that original sin. That sin committed in the Garden of Eden. God commanded not to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But they omitted, they committed, they decided to take the fruit from the tree. That means they rejected God's dominion, God's ruling. From that, human tragedy originated. To reverse that tragedy in our lives, God sent his son, begotten son, only son to us. He pays uh, our penalty of sin by his death on the cross. And he died on the cross for our sins. And whosoever believe in him shall not, be, shall not perish, but have eternal life. That's the, the most important message out of all this book. For God so loved the world that he gave his son gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. By accepting Jesus as a personal Savior and Lord, one comes to be his blessed people of his kingdom. God rule over him with blessed intent, with much blessing. I pray and I desire that everyone of this fellowship to believe and accept Jesus Christ as personal Savior and Lord, like Jake Kim. I'm so happy with him. And because this is the matter of life and death, the most important thing. And this can rightly claim our priority. If you, received, uh, if you already received Jesus Christ as a personal Savior, then what it means to seek the kingdom of God? That means you have a priority in your life, which is the kingdom of God. Seek first, the Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God. That means you have priority. You have many important things to do, but you have priority in your life. That is to seek his kingdom, his blessed dominion over you. And his thought is over your thought. His plan should be over your plan. Because his plan and his thought is much, much better than yours. And he wants to rule with blessed, much blessing. When I first came to this church, Avalon Baptist Church, as a senior pastor, the first sermon was on this scripture. Um, I believe to seek his kingdom should be priority in the life of Christian, in the life of church. So I preached this sermon. Let us make sure we seek his kingdom first. Let us seek his dominion, his ruling over, his blessed ruling. That is the most important thing we need to seek. After I finished seven years of term, uh, I was blessed to have sabbatical leave. Just before leaving the state, I preached the same sermon on the, on the kingdom of God to make it sure that our priority is to seek his kingdom. 
after returning from the sabbatical leave, I preached on the same theme, that is kingdom of God. We need to seek the kingdom, his kingdom, because we are his people. We are blessed his people. God wants to guide us and rule over us with blessing. This church is the church I preached for the first time in my life. When I was a minister of education about 20 years ago, I made first sermon uh, in this church. If Lord bless me to retire from church, and I will preach the same sermon, the kingdom of God. Because the kingdom of God is the main theme of our Lord Jesus preaching. And when he started preaching, the time has come. The kingdom of God is near. So repent and believe the gospel. That was the Jesus' first preaching. So as a follower of Jesus, as a disciple of Jesus, as a disciple preacher of Jesus, my main theme of whole life sermon to be the kingdom of God, to seek and help people to seek the kingdom of God. I want you to have a priority in your life. That is to seek his kingdom, seek his dominion. We want to lead our lives by our thought, by our plan. But sometimes that lacks too much. God loves us. God knows better than us. God loves more than we love ourselves. So he has a great plan. He has a great plan for you and your children and your future. So if we know his will and then we follow his will, that is to seek his kingdom, that's the best in your life. That is the best thing in your life. So please make sure you have a priority, that is to seek his kingdom. Amen? Yeah, amen. And second thing I'd like to look uh, look with you, consider with you, that is, there is an effort to be paid. Um, Jesus said that, but seek first his kingdom. I'd like to put emphasis on seek. Seek, not sick. Sick and tired of, not sick and tired of. Well, seek. Uh, but seek first his kingdom. We must seek his kingdom. Then what, it, what is it to seek his kingdom? What does it mean? I would like to say that is the obedience. We came to know that the kingdom of God is his dominion, blessed dominion, blessed ruling over us. And how God can rule us, I mean, how can God rule over us? He does by his word and by his spirit. If one decided to seek his kingdom, then he or she should follow his guidance which can be provided by the word and the holy spirit the following his his guidance is obedience so we need to pay there is an effort to be paid which is obedience we try to obey we have to make a choice we have to make a decision to obey the word of God. This is our portion. In order to be saved, there's nothing we can do about it. We just believe what Jesus has done on the cross. We just believe and accept him as our personal savior. But after that, if we want to live godly life, we need an effort. We need to be disciplined to obey his teachings and his guidance. Uh, I recognize that the blood flowing through my vein and artery are the blood of disobedience. Of course, by faith in Jesus Christ, I was saved. My spiritual status changed. I became the children of God. But inside, the quality does not change. In my vein and artery, the blood of disobedience flowing every day. So I have to ask God, ask his help to change my blood, the blood of obedience. Because the blood of disobedience can hand it down from human ancestor. We call him 
Adam and Eve. Our blood handed down from them. They disobey God. Even though we were saved, as I mentioned before, in my vein, in my artery, the blood of disobedience flows. On recognizing that, I try to die every day, like Paul, great missionary Apostle Paul. He claimed that I die every day. Now I come to understand him, come to understand a little bit of that. Therefore, we need effort to obey, to obey his teachings and his guidance. If that is the will of God, if there is a plan of God, if it is sure that is the will of God, then even though I don't understand, even though I do not fully know what it is, but if it is God's will and God's thought, it is better to obey because the result of that is much, much better than of my thought, my plan. So I want you to seek the kingdom of God by obedience. So when you read the Bible, when you listen to the sermon, please decide to obey, even though I do not understand, even though that go beyond my understanding. It is much better for you to obey that which, will, which resulted in blessings to your life. The third thing, third factor we can see uh, from this passage, that there is a blessing to be enjoyed. This verse says, And all things shall be added unto you. We know the context of this verse. Jesus talking about basic, the context of this verse is about basic need, necessity of life, such as food and clothes and shelter. The disciples were worried about their food and their clothing and their shelter. Even though they were listening to the great sermon on the mountain, and they were, their mind was preoccupied with earthly necessities. Of course, we need that. For our existence, we need those things. But Jesus called our attention to higher, higher way of life. And then he gave promise, if you, seek, if you first seek the kingdom of God, then other things shall be added unto you. Even though you didn't put priority on that, but Father knows your needs. So he provides those things. That is his blessing for us to be enjoyed. Mm. I'd like to share my uh, little testimony before a wrap of my sermon. Mm. I was praying with a group of seminary students about 18 years ago. Uh, Benjamin Kim, you may know him. Uh, ben Kim and other uh, students in the campus of Southwestern, we were praying together. And I was leading the prayer group. And each time we gather, we jot down our prayer concerns with a little memo, and then we share it and pick one and pray for it. And I prayed this memo. Uh, it's a prayer concern of Benjamin Kim. <clears throat> he, his prayer concern was like this. Lord, give me a car. You know, I need a t- transportation. Give me a car. <laughs> so uh, I was praying for his car. And the Lord spoke to my heart and said, give yours. You have two cars. I was so surprised and shocked. Lord, you know that I need two cars. One for me, one for my wife. She was a student also. We have different schedule. So I cannot give a ride. So we, we bought two cars. So I, I uh, talked back to him. Lord, you know that we need two cars, one for me, one for my wife. And then the Spirit spoke to me again, give yours. You have two cars. So I was, um, I was thinking, what should I do? Uh, what should I do? And in that prayer, I thought, 
You are my Lord. I am your servant. My life, my priority of my life is to seek your kingdom, your guidance, your, your word. So Lord, even though I need two cars, but if you say give away one car to your friend, then I will. And you will prepare a better car for me. <laughs> uh, so I, after uh, I decided in my, in my prayer, and then I, I gave my car key to him uh, after the prayer. And he was so surprised and said, your prayer is being answered very quickly. <laughs> many, many years have passed. That friend called me to invite to our church leaders conference, which is being held in Los Angeles. At that time, I was so tired from, from my ministry, and I needed some time away. So I uh, flew to Los Angeles. Uh, he provided air ticket and everything. And I uh, came there, and in that conference, I heard another God's voice to go to Korea. And then later on, Everlove Church invited me to, uh, to this ministry. And I was so blessed by this ministry. And I, my life was so blessed by this ministry. The little obedience to the word of God, God used him, God tested me. And then through him, I came to Los Angeles and at there, I heard God's voice to come to Korea. This is my little testimony. And God has great plan for you. And God wants to rule over you with his blessed intent, blessed plan. So please make a priority to seek God's kingdom in your life, his blessed dominion. And then please try to obey when God says what to do. That is for you, not for himself. When God says something to you, that is totally for you, for your benefits, for your future. And then enjoy what God brings to your life. And, and you are the blessed children of God. God loves you very much, and our church loves you very much, and I love you very much too. Let us pray.